Hey guys, this is Nick with Atomic Underground. We're here at the uh, Titan II silo in uh, Arkansas. We're just outside of Little Rock. We tore the uh, existing corrugated roof off this morning. It uh, did not provide any kind of control for bugs. It barely kept the water out. And there was just really nothing that would keep people from breaking in here. And uh, at the moment, it's not the safest place in the world. We really don't want people coming in. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour as of uh, Today is June 8th, 2019, and we have access to almost everything in the silo or in the uh, launch control center except for level three. So uh, here we go. Apologize for the bouncy video. This is being shot on an iPhone. Uh, we'll be getting uh, GoPros in here later, but this is kind of a down and dirty as we do it. So if you watched our short videos, you saw that this area about a month ago was completely full of water. The bottom of the access portal is about 40 feet below us right now. This is one of our uh, air ventilation ducts. I shut it off so we can actually hear for this tour. But we are ventilating out. We didn't find any bad gases in there. We ran the gas meter. Uh, unlike one of the other silos that was open here in Arkansas, there was no methane here. I'll be rebuilding the whole top today. All right, it's gonna get dark. So these floors were put in about five, 10 years ago uh, by the previous owner. They were marine grade plywood. In most cases, they're in pretty good shape. Uh, we got LED lights going in here, so it'll be a little bit brighter. Uh, this access portal is so deep that one of our pumps, even though it's supposed to have a 40 foot head on it, they weren't able to pump it out. So we doubled the pump up and used a trash can for that doing the relay pump. It's uh, sped this up probably 10 times over. So moving on to level three of the access portal. This is the first level that we have the elevator shaft open. Again, these are not the original floors. This is plywood and uh, pressure treated lumber. Four LED lights going in here. It's gonna be a lot brighter probably the next time you see it. So this is the lowest level of the access portal. This is the uh, 6,000 pound blast door. It's called door six. Elevator shaft down here. It is hard to see on the video. It's pretty dark down here. Um, this is where we are kind of using for our pumping area. The water you see coming is coming out of the launch control center right now. It is an absolute mess down here. Uh, the previous owner left a lot of stuff. Um, he never intended for it to flood, so there's a lot of ruined stuff down here. Uh, old extension cords, which are pretty well ruined. Other stuff. All right, moving through door six, door seven. This is a little bit of standing water. We'll probably get this out later tonight. Uh, when the contractors decommissioned this silo, they did not weld the door shut like they were supposed to. They actually left it wide open, which uh, when they buried it, caused a lot of dirt to come in here in the blast lock. So, got some digging ahead of us. So this is the uh, junction room of the blast lock. Heading left here is the launch control center. You'll get to see that in a minute. Heading to the right, I believe these are doors eight and nine. So this is nut door nine right in front of us. Amazingly enough, all these lights, um, not the bulbs, but the lights were existing in here. They were underwater for two years. We dried them out, replaced uh, the bulbs with LED bulbs and about 99% of them fired right up. This is the decontamination room. Um, previous owner had prepped a lot of stuff for scrapping here. Here's one of the uh, pins for the blast door. Those of you that follow, uh, we had a Reddit thread on Ask Me Anything. Uh, we're talking about um, chemicals and stuff in here. 
I've already had the water tested. Uh, I really didn't come back with anything more than mud and grime, uh, but nothing hazardous. Um, the paint, surprisingly enough, did not come back as lead paint. Uh, we did find some asbestos. I got a contractor who's going to come out here and take care of that for us. So we're going to go all the way down to the bulkhead that was built uh, about eight years ago at the end of this tunnel. Uh, this has only been exposed uh, and empty uh, from water now for about two days to the point where we can walk down here and be dry. It's humid in here. Uh, it's actually fairly cold. It's only about 56 degrees. This is uh, right behind here. You can see the air duct. We just ran it. This is the one that was down here from the previous owner. We didn't have any holes in it. It had some water. We drained all that out and uh, it makes effective ventilation. It's all down and dirty, you know, down here for right now, but uh, we do have good ventilation so that there's a good oxygen content down here. You know, nobody wants to uh, be entombed in a Titan II missile silo. So we had a pump down here at the end. This one was actually one of the pumps that was submerged for the last two years. It never broke. It was the pump in the access portal that failed that caused it to flood. Um, it's gonna get pretty dark down here. I got the power turned off because we actually cut this pump out and moved it into the launch control center for now. I've got a smaller pump that's gonna come down here and maintain this. That valve there on, that you can see on the uh, bottom, that goes basically to the silo. If you open that up, you get about 17 PSI of water pressure. Uh, we did the calculation about the strength of this bulkhead. We think there's a little over 100,000 pounds of water on the other side. So it's a pretty strong bulkhead, but it's got a little bow to it. It's held for 10 years. Um, just a very small pinhole leak uh, somewhere down the bottom. We can't even find it. But I expected to find some spraying or something where a weld failed, and I just haven't found anything like that. Most of this is dry and pretty good looking. All right, looking back down the long cable way. So by the end of today, we'll have a little pump down there. Um, there hasn't been a pump on here in 12 hours and there's still no water here. It's only, uh, most of the water that you saw back there had been there. So it definitely is not flooding quickly at all. From what the previous owner told me, he hadn't been out to the site in several months. And when they came out, the pump had failed and there was only about a foot of water. So, you know, we're looking not too difficult to keep the water out of here once it's out. Um, you guys watching the video, you can comment if you want to see any specific items in here. Um, these are kind of the springs that held up. This entire structure, it's kind of a good spot where we've done some scrapping in here. Um, the entire structure is suspended from these springs, this round thing right here. And in the event that this facility was had a near hit with a nuclear weapon, everything in here, all this cable racking would kind of bounce on the springs, keep it from being damaged. So we're back in the decontamination room. Uh, we were actually lucky. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do with it, but this facility here on the wall, these are the uh, some of the blast overpressure valves. They're here in um, GT Hill Silo, which is uh, the channel Death Wears Bunny Slippers. He doesn't have these. So it's nice that they haven't taken everything out of every one of these. All right, moving forward. So when the contractor from the Air Force uh, came out and uh, decommissioned this facility, they took most of the copper out. Um, there's a few little pieces here and there, but for the most part, there's not a whole lot of money in here as far as copper. Um, there's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of steel, but it was really fun to mine out of here. Sorry about the shaking. Get you guys shot up here in the ceiling if anybody's interested. That's looking back out through the blast lock to the access portal. All right, so this is where uh, the launch control center is. This is the short cable way. Again, we had ventilation going in here earlier. It's nice, clean air. The water is just shallow enough that we can get in. 
uh, with waders without uh, completely swamping. So in the last uh, two or three hours here, the floor came out of the water. I'll give you a panel around the room here. It's the only uh, major rack that's still on level two. There used to be more racks here where you see my flashlight. The launch control desk went right over these two grooves here. Unfortunately, that's not here. We would love to have one. I had a suspicion that this console was the deputy commander's desk. This is where the second key went, and it originally would have been over there, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't see the keyhole in it. Um, so it may have just been another equipment rack. So the uh, nice surprise that we did get when the contractors decommissioned this, somebody thought it was a good idea to cut one of these springs out. Uh, there used to be one right here. They cut it and I'm guessing they didn't want to do it again because the entire facility tilted and probably dropped about a foot and tilted a little bit to its side. It's not too noticeable when you're walking around in here, but you can maybe see it on the video. Um, probably scared the crap out of them. After 30 years underwater, there's about inch to two inches of silt on the floor. Let me finish kind of panning around for you. That's the air intake. Uh, it's actually a blast valve. The air intake itself is that small, uh, I believe it's a four inch opening. There's a buffer pipe up inside uh, underground and that's actually where the air came in. So the air opening is not this large opening. Okay, well obviously we won't be doing a tour of level three today unless anybody else brought their scuba gear. Um, so we'll be going up to level one. There's one bent stair there. I Something had to have been incredibly heavy to do that. These stairs, so this is all just dirt. Um, there's The rust in here is very minimal. It's all surface rust. Um, nothing structural. Once we um, pressure wash, and there's a few spots I want to sandblast just because I want a nice finish, but most of this is going to be pressure washed out. That'll remove the paint and clean everything up so we can paint in here. Right now it's way too humid to do really anything. So up here, this is where the uh, hot water heater was. I'm actually kind of surprised it's not here. It's in most of the other silos. It's useless. It's just, um, just scrap metal, but it's surprising that it's gone. Okay, so the room we're going into here, this was the uh, crew bedroom. Um, these doors are actually numbered doors in the blueprints. That's why the front door is door six. I'm not sure offhand uh, which doors these are numbered, but one of these is door one, two, and three up here. This is the crew bedroom. Um, one of the other silos that's been scrapped out, uh, GT's, he has removed all of the partition walls already and it makes for a horrible echo. Um, with this facility, Still has the acoustic tiles up. Of course, they're ruined, but uh, there's no echo in here at all. That black thing you can see is actually the boot. Um, each room is sealed. None of these rooms are attached to the outside structure. And the whole facility hangs from those springs down there and comes, there's a big J bolt up in the concrete. You can see uh, a little more uh, information on that on one of GT's videos. There's some carpeting up here that's going to need to come out, among other things. Okay, this is the uh, bathroom. I'll make the same comment that somebody else did. Somebody forgot to flush the toilet. It got a little wet in here. This is the shower. Really hard to see in here. It's dark. We haven't run any lights. So, kind okay. of urinal's still here. Um, sink. It's pretty nasty. I think I'm about to run out of video time, so I'm going to run into the next room here because YouTube will only allow a 15-minute video. 
Welcome to the kitchen. You guys have a great day.